Welcome back to The Blindsiders. I'm Ben. I'm joined here by Brian, and we are going to talk about episode uh, 10? 11? Which episode is this? Uh, Again, we got... right. I think it's 10, right? Yeah. Because we have two do- double boots and one non-boot uh, episode. So uh, I think episode 10 of uh, Zara 41. Uh, and uh, we can confirm tonight that uh, Shan is not winning Survivor 41. I know. Um, shocking development. I can only imagine the people who do the edric uh, following are in shambles uh today i i don't know who's gonna win this season um kind of starting to think it might be heather at this point who knows uh well, yeah I shocking know. stuff <laughs> uh i th- actually think the edgic people had tiffany for a while randomly <laughs> right. um so, so after that and then the one two of <laughs> tiffany and chan oof yeah uh, yeah, we'll talk about who we uh, who we think it's going to be at this point. Uh, you know, at final seven, both of our winner picks are still in the running, um, technically. Very good. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, definitely a surprise. Uh, it definitely took a while during the episode for us to get to the point where it started to feel like this was a possibility. I think, hmm. um, at least to me. I don't know if you felt differently. Um. I didn't, I didn't see Erica and Heather flipping on Shan after like Shan had tried to flip. So I was surprised. And then not only that, but once we had the flip in place, I was kind of like, this kind of gives a, an easy way for Danny and Deshaun to kind of like skirt past this by voting Erica out, you know, Mm -hmm. on the split vote. Like they can very easily just be like, you know what? We have our four. We don't need to rock the boat. Let's just get Erica out. So I kind of figured that was going to happen. And going into tribal council, I was like, okay, like, whatever. Let's just, like, vote Erica out, you know. Um, But, yeah, no, this is is surprising to me. I thought, I mean, I texted you during the episode that Shan's totally going to win. So what the fuck do I know? I don't know why you're all listening to my my expertise. (laughs) Yeah, I, you, I'm surprised that you thought that Erica was going at Tribal Council because going into the Tribal Council, and especially during the Tribal Council, mm-hmm. uh, I was pretty confident that she was going. Uh, to me, the turning point was, uh, like, the I think the Ricard had a confessional um, shortly before the Tribal Council, and I was like, yeah, this is, uh, this is looking to be, uh, like, the, the moment that that's going to mm-hmm. happen at this point. Um, yeah. yeah, for me, I, I think it was a lot of just like, what's the most boring outcome of this episode? And then I was like, that's Erica, so that's probably what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's not the case. It, it is funny because it's like, uh, as far as the boots go, this is like probably the biggest boot of the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as far as like, you know, there wasn't any wacky twists or any craziness this episode, it was a pretty straightforward survivor episode. Uh, there is an extra vote, and there was two idols in the game, and neither none of those got played. Uh, no, nothing new interacting. You know, regular reward challenge, pretty straightforward. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully, this kind of shows production. That's like you don't, we don't need these twists and advantages for the big moments because, like, most of the season, the twists and advantages have been either misplayed or held and gone people have gone out with them so like survivor is best when it's people realizing that they're pretty close to a million dollars and like that's not something you get in real life and then it causes people to make these hard decisions yeah um yeah and uh also um, as you brought that up Two for two now with people going home with that. Or actually three for three because Brad also went home with an idol in his pocket early on in the game. He did. Uh, so Xander uh, Xander is basically our only hope at this point for somebody actually successfully playing an idol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Xander over here with uh, giant balls, diamond hands, whatever you want to say, just mm-hmm. doesn't blink. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's going to hodl his way all the way to the, the finals. <laughs> um, seems, seems likely. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, this time, you know, 
I, I was I was actually kind of confused uh, whether or not he was going to play it because uh, last week we had uh, Ricard at the Tribal Council telling him to play it, and this week we had Ricard before the Tribal Council telling him, uh, "Do not play it, please. You're going to waste it. If you want to waste it, that's fine, but I'm you know giving you the heads up." Mm -hmm. And both times he's held it, so you know. Maybe maybe he's just the ballsiest player in the game. Maybe he just has amazing reads or what. Yeah. No, I, I did, like, there was a moment where Ricard was like, don't play your idol. He's like, I'm definitely playing it. <laughs> like, uh, why would I ever trust you? <laughs> like, <laughs> so ridiculous. But, no, he, he decided not to, and get on him. Yeah, all right. Uh, I guess we kind of got over a little bit of uh, overview, but mm -hmm. uh, we can go through a little bit of the piece by piece here. Uh, I think there there is a lot to go over piece by piece, but I do think that there was a, a couple, like two or three kind of overarching stories in the episode. Uh, and a lot of it is just like kind of built around this like nebulous, like trust, distrust situation where, mm. you know, like if you have, if you're paranoid and you have allies who are paranoid, at a certain point, you're just kind of playing this game of chicken of like, who blinks first and like you know makes a move against the other person because they're afraid that if they don't make the move now, then they're gonna have the made move on them, yep. a move made on them. Uh, and we start that out at the start of the episode with like this conversation that Erica is having on the beach with Deshaun uh, about, funnily enough, taking out Shan. Mm -hmm. Erica told us right away what was gonna happen tonight. We yeah, didn't listen. Mastermind. Yeah, yep. she's the mastermind. <laughs> she is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and um, after this, we kind of had uh, Shan notice that this conversation was taking place, uh, correctly surmise what was going on in the conversation. Uh, uh, that, was, that was very funny. Give her a lot of credit for being like, okay, they're talking about voting me off, mm -hmm. clearly. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's not a good look when you come back from this double trial council and they're like explaining to each other what happened at each other's travel councils and, yeah. and Shan is very openly like maybe on purpose, maybe not on purpose, taking kind of credit for the Nasir blind side, mm -hmm. uh, even though it was like, like, I think Ricard actually was the one who was like, you know, I told Shan to use the extra vote, uh, but it still came off to everybody else that it was Shan's move. Even though it was, we all know as the audience that it was primarily our cards. Mm -hmm. um, so, and yeah, everyone there had very different reaction from us uh, last week, where we yeah. said, "Wow, you wasted an extra vote." Everyone yeah. there was like, "Hell yeah, really good move," like locked it up. So, honestly, uh, I don't know if it's full like Eric from Samoa, but like perception versus reality versus what mm. reality is uh reality is what the players make it and if they judge that as a good successful move then that's all that really matters in the game yeah i i think it's probably a combination of like they don't have the full knowledge of exactly how the numbers played out probably and they didn't really like think too deeply into it because it doesn't super matter and then on top of that like you use an advantage and the outcome that you want to happen happens, even if, like, the using of the advantage doesn't have, like, a direct, you know, correlative effect on it. I think that right. still looks good. It yeah. does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. It's like, yeah. as long as it looks good, the all that matters. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's about the sell, right? As long as you can sell it, uh, it doesn't really, you know, like, the, the actual details don't, don't really matter. Right. Um. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Shan sees the Deshaun and Erica conversations. He approaches Deshaun, and uh, she's like, yeah, you guys are talking about voting me out, right? Yeah? And he, like, half lies. Yeah. He's, He's like, yeah, lie. Erica was talking to me about working with Xander, but doesn't say what the end goal of that would be. Yeah. It's like, hmm, about what? Yeah, let's you do know? some calculus here right mm -hmm. if it's if it's erica and deshaun deshaun presumably has danny erica presumably has heather mm -hmm. they're gonna work together with with xander who's who's the target here yeah who's left out of this mm -hmm. <laughs> so 
yeah, it didn't take a it didn't take a rocket science yeah. to figure out what was gonna happen there. Yeah. But uh you know, very interesting like outside of the game stuff coming in here with uh Deshaun kind of struggling with himself being like I think my best move is to take Shan out, but there are things bigger than the game happening here and how do I you know balance that and I just thought it was very interesting you know to get a peek at at his thought process and then Shan had similar confessionals in it as well where you know we talked all summer about the cookout playing for something more than the game of Big Brother very similar stuff here so you know Survivor's still delivering like the really interesting social moments uh, all these years later for all its faults. And we point out all the faults here quite regularly. Yeah. I, I I think that it is, it is rare in modern survivor that you get a lot of these kind of emotional moments where it's like, Mm. this is strategically best for me to do the certain thing, but I have these like emotional connections and like, uh like you know larger uh emotional reasons to not do this uh even though like i intellectually know it's correct and liana also has uh, like a moment like this where you know later on she finds out information that you know could make her into a power player but she decides that her relationship with shan is too strong and she wants mm-hmm. to stay uh committed to that um, whether even like if it's the downfall of her uh, game yeah, I mean, like, when Ben and I complain about old school versus new school Survivor, these are the things that we miss. Like, I, I don't want to speak for you, Ben, but I assume you're on the same page mm-hmm. with me. Like, the interpersonal dynamics and the, what would you do for a million dollars? What is a million dollars worth to you versus your, like, outside of the game morals or, like, feelings? And it's very compelling stuff. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, this is, you know, this is like the, the meat and potatoes of Survivor mm-hmm. and like, you know, the the reason that like the the game itself is, you know, is a great storytelling medium at all. It's just, mm-hmm. you know, because you can't have good storylines and good characters without this kind of internal and external turmoil that comes mm-hmm. from having to make these emotionally and, uh, you know, intellectually difficult decisions. Mm-hmm. And it's considerably more interesting to watch than people like crunching numbers on advantages <laughs> yeah that people trouncing yeah. through the jungle searching yeah. for get out of jail free card like yeah. it's not it's not what we love survivor for uh yeah um and so um yeah we have uh i guess we move on from that to our reward challenge yeah, this is kind of the the first because I would say this is like the Ricard breakout episode. Like this is like like Ricard had good moments uh, last week, and he's had you know a good storyline all season long. Uh, you know from the you know original Uwa as well. Um, but like this is like the moment that Ricard as an individual kind of takes the forefront as kind of the star because mm-hmm. he's going to end up winning the reward challenge. The immunity challenge and be like the <laughs> the person who orchestra- orchestrates the Shan blind side, mm-hmm. uh, with Shan being his like number one ally at that point in the game. Uh, you know, well we'll debate the merits uh, back and forth about the decision, but mm-hmm. you can't uh, argue with the fact that like he is like the star of the episode in my opinion. Oh yeah, this is his episode, <laughs> huge episode for a yeah. card. I mean, pizza under the stars. What more could you want? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was that the edge of extinction? I don't. I don't know what island is what because yeah. I believe the the shipwreck island was edge of extinction. The edge of yeah. extinction from yeah from both seasons I think. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, what do they call this this reward place again? The survivor survivor island? sanctuary sanctuary yeah. Which like everyone who spent uh, time on edge of extinction is like what? <laughs> Excuse me, Reem is losing it watching this yeah. episode. <laughs> <laughs> On those seasons, they would have had to uh, lug uh, 4,000 pounds of wood up and down a hill in order to spend like 10 minutes at the sanctuary. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. 
Ethan nearly died for this, okay? <laughs> he guys eating pizza here is disrespectful. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, Ricardo wins this, like, you know, uh, knots and puzzle challenge. Does this, uh, this knots challenge give you some, uh, any PTSD? Very much so, as cool. always. Uh, anytime yeah. uh, one of these comes up, anyone familiar with my uh, time on the Durham Warrior Survival Challenge, uh, this was pretty much my undoing. My whole game fell apart because it was a challenge very similar to this, so don't love it. Don't love it at all. Um, yeah. And when Xander got all twisted up, I was like, oof, flashbacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, at least uh, Xander got twisted up because the rope got, like, coiled. Yeah, like, that was really like, weird. Um, it was like a, a knotted, uh, like, you know, garden hose or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, uh, we have at the uh, at the end of this challenge, it was, it was relatively close, but uh, it looked like Ricard really blasted through the puzzle yeah. way faster than anyone else. Uh, and he wins, and he has to choose one person to go on this reward. No wait, two, no wait, three. Uh, like, the two, I was always like, yeah, of course, two. But uh, the, the third, I was I was even like, oh, wow, okay. That's mm-hmm. uh, half the people in the game going on this reward. That's that's a lot. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Like, uh, And what are your thoughts on, on this? Because like, this is a trope that Survivor does constantly, so it's not even like a surprise anymore. It's just like a matter of how many times is Jeff going to lie to you? Uh, right. um, Pick one more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Do you think it's played out? Do you think it's like, you know, it would just be better if they told him up front? Mm, yeah. <laughs> I do <laughs> think it would be better if they just told him up front. Like, yeah. Uh, I guess, like, the idea is, like, since you don't know mm-hmm. how many, like, maybe you panic and yeah. pick somebody that you don't really think through. But I think you have to expect, like, as many people, like, you just have to have in your mind, like, what what is my order of people mm-hmm. that I'm going to pick all the way down to, like, the last person on the tribe. Yeah. Well, I mean, that is kind of, I guess, one of the upsides to doing it this way is it's kind of like coconut chop esque so if like a power player wins it you can kind of mm-hmm. potentially see what their priority is or like who is going to get food or the reward or whatever mm-hmm. um, but yeah i i'm generally against though uh punishing people socially for <laughs> winning <laughs> Yes, the, uh, um, the Brenda so, Memorial uh, yeah, the Brenda Challenge. Yeah, Brenda Memorial yeah. <laughs> Literally the, the most brutal thing Survivor's yeah. ever done for a reward. But, uh, yeah. you know, um, it is what it is. I, I thought it was very interesting. Like, Shan, I was like, yep, yeah, makes sense. Like, well, until the rest of this episode. I was like, yeah, of course, they're together. <laughs> like, yeah. um, the, you know what, Ben? It's just so funny looking back to when we were talking about the before the merge and we're like, obviously, like, these two have been bonded through it. Um, They're going to definitely, like, know that sticking together is better than trying to take each other out. And then uh, now it made me look real dumb. Um, Made me look like I had no idea what I was talking about. Well, I mean... Maybe. Maybe we'll be vindicated. We have no idea where we're going to be. Yeah, if Ricard gets voted off right after this, then it's going to be like, well, you know, <laughs> that's that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so Shan makes sense. Um, Heather, I was a little surprised, but only because we don't really know Heather very much. Uh-huh. Um, and then Xander, I was like, oh, okay. okay. Like, I guess uh, Ricard really was trying to make it look like he was – caring more about you know who actually gave stuff up and who hasn't had rewards so that was good and uh yeah he's right xander has given up two rewards so it's good yep. stuff 100 percent um and uh yeah uh it's uh you couldn't pick nasir who's the other person who gave up a reward because mm-hmm. they voted nasir out so yeah so <laughs> were you uh were you surprised that the survivor sanctuary was just like a little shelter and some pizza. They didn't like give them a movie. They didn't give them anything yeah. else. Like it's like, okay, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, it's, it definitely was like, how can we make this reward unique from all the other rewards without actually doing anything? <laughs> right. 
Yeah, no, it definitely felt like that because it was. I mean, we didn't even really get to see what the shelter looked like there. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess they've they've torn down the Sandra and Boston Rob uh, mansion, so couldn't have them go there. That would have been a nice little callback, but uh, you know, apparently it was dry enough, so that was good. I mean, like getting in general, getting a reward is going to be better than a reward, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Beggars can't be choosers on Survivor, really. Like, although I've fine. heard the pizza is pretty bad, so who yeah. knows? Yeah, it is. It yeah, always it, it always does look really bad. It, it definitely, yeah, it definitely does not look. I mean, you know, I don't know how like great uh, the pizzerias are in Fiji. To be fair, like I don't know if they you know fly the pizza in from like mm-hmm. uh, you know New Zealand or something. Here's the thing: wait. like, as a, as a pizza shop vet. Uh, it's not hard to make pizza. Uh-huh. Like pizza dough is one of the easiest things to make. So like, is it the flour? Do you have just cheap flour? What is happening here? How is this getting lost in translation to no matter where they go? Like from when they were in Brazil to now in Fiji, it always looks like shit. Yeah, you know, just like I don't get. No, 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 that's not. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't know, like, you, I, making pizza, like, making edible pizza is easy, right? Like, not brewing up the execution, but, like, if you use bad ingredients, the pizza yeah, is not going to taste good. That's, like, the thing. It has to be bad ingredients. It has to be, yeah. Because, like, you can just pick, like, any person who's worked in a pizza shop and be like, hey, can you make this pizza dough for us? And they'll be able to kill it if they have good ingredients, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I think it's... Um, I would say that's like, you know, uh, other than like top end of pizza places from like, you know, really, you know, yeah. famous pe- like pizzerias and like, you know, Italy or New York or something like, yeah, but yeah, yeah. to get like, you know, 85th percentile pizza, you mm. pretty much just need to be like not a moron and have a good experience. Exactly. We're not yeah. asking for the brick oven, like yeah. fire or, um, yeah, flame, like made pizza, like, the pan pizza you can get at a local place is fine. Mm. Oh, man. Anyways, this is our soapbox on uh, Survivor Pizza. Um, Jeff, if you're if you're listening, I will make the pizza for you guys. Hire me. I will come out. And that, as long as that's my only job, you got, uh, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and so, importantly on this reward, uh, we do not have... Uh, Danny, Deshaun, uh, Liana, and Erica. Erica, less important, uh, but we have... uh, Story of Erica's season, unfortunately. We have the first kind of negative uh, coming from Ricard winning the challenge, which is that Danny uh, suddenly thinks that he's a threat. Not wrong. Yeah. He is kind of a challenge beast. Yeah. I mean, I don't know... If, if, like, the goal is to get uh, this kind of group alliance of four black, black players to the end together, I don't know if Ricard is the person who is the most in the way of that as opposed to Xander. But if we're looking at somebody like Danny's game, I do think Ricard is probably the biggest, uh, you know, roadblock at this point to him getting to a winning position. Because mm-hmm. if they ride this five-person alliance down to five, which is one that we've talked about on this podcast previously, uh, Danny and Deshaun do not look very good at that five because no. Shan has Liana on one side and Ricard on the other. And if they're loyal to her, then uh, that's not good. Yeah, and I like their initial plan, honestly, I was like, this makes a lot of sense. Like, you need yeah. to start removing these players that Shan can potentially use against you. So Ricard was probably the perfect like boot in this in this situation. It's just unfortunate that he won immunity. Yeah. Uh, and so we get the kind of inciting incident here for the entire rest of the episode, uh, which is uh, Danny and Deshaun talk. They say, we should vote our card. And they're like, yeah, I think we should vote our card. Uh, and they're like, okay, well, let's bring in uh, Liana, because I can't go poorly. Uh, we should not tell Shan, but we should definitely tell Liana, who's not going to immediately run to Shan, obviously. 
Uh, and so they bring in Liana, and they ask her, uh, who, who is the most dangerous person in the game? Uh, whose stock is rising right now? And she lists yeah. off basically every person. Shan. Yeah. Immediately, she's like, Shan. Yeah. You're going to tell me about Shan? I'm like, uh, no, but you're right, but no. <laughs> yeah. Erica? Erica. Yeah. Erica also has like this weird specter over her of like everyone's just like Erica's so fucking good at Survivor. It's like she's just standing there menacingly, like she's that meme. <laughs> she's but literally done like, nothing the entire yeah. game. She had one conversation with Deshaun on the boat like three weeks ago. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> she's done zero things since then. Yeah, well, she so- broke the hourglass. Don't forget, Ben. True, yeah. She she was she was handed the most stupid broken twist in the season for no reason. And she made the only competent decision that she could have made. Oh man. Yeah, no, I I don't get it personally, but I clearly we're not being shown something. Yeah, I don't I I guess they're just like yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. They've been running out of people. They just have to invent reasons to vote people out, right? Mm-hmm. That's true. Well, uh, we're getting down to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so she, we we get the, the Ricard plan in motion, and Liana is not about that at all. Well, it, it's not that she's not about voting Ricard out. She's not about betraying uh, Shan, so. Yeah. She doesn't like the idea of keeping her out of the loop. Mm -hmm. A little bit of character growth almost, you know? Like, uh, she's she's really the only person who's betrayed an alliance openly Mm -hmm. in this game, and now she's she doesn't want to betray alliances. So it's good stuff. Yeah, no, she had uh, zero qualms about uh, throwing Evie right out of the bus uh, the second she had an opportunity. Uh, (laughs) Maybe if Evie had listened to her and kept voting, things could have been different. Mostly that they who even know who makes the merge from that tribe without Xander yeah. putting it on uh, his back. But mm. Yeah, <sighs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, come back from reward and Liana immediately goes to Shan and is like, you know, I can't keep this from you. Uh, Danny and Sean approached me and they are... Uh, he, this is like the first instance of bad comms this episode, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, where... <laughs> Uh, Leanna doesn't really explain at, up front what's happening. She kind of just makes Shan guess. Uh, mm-hmm. And Shan immediately goes for the worst, which is, oh, they're going to come after me. Uh, well, that's right. not the case. And Leanna's like, yes, they're going to come after you by targeting Ricard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then, like, we see the um, Shan and Ricard. Which is just like a weird situation because her car just like, why are you telling me this? Mm-hmm. Like, which to me, uh, I was like surprised because her card seemingly has written Shan off at this point. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Did you think that was as weird as I thought it was? His yeah. reaction to it? I thought they both handled this poorly. Um, okay. <laughs> I thought that Shan handled it poorly by not making it clear that Liana was with her. Uh, by repeatedly saying that Liana was a part of the conversation and discussion to target Ricard, mm. uh, it, it was like if I didn't have any of the previous context and I was just in Ricard's shoes, my takeaway would be, oh, I don't have votes. I have zero votes to do anything about this situation because I don't think he knows about Xander's extra vote, which is one. Mm. And he is being fed very poorly described information that makes it sound like Liana is not going to be voting with him. So Mm. he is like just kind of running the numbers in his head and is like, I don't think that this is possible. Um, So that might be one of the main issues. And I think the secondary main issue is that uh, I, I think that do you think that he knew that he was the fifth and the five at this or before this? I don't know. Um, I don't know how what he viewed that alliance mm-hmm. as because he keeps talking about like 
oh, you know, we knew when we'd get down to it, we'd have to turn on each other. Yeah. And it's like, okay, but if you knew that, what are you doing to, like, put yourself in a position to, like, be able to turn on mm-hmm. her? I saw none of that before this episode, personally. Yeah, and I mean, if we talk about it, but I think going forward, I don't know if he has uh, the. No. I don't think he has the pieces on the board to to, to really you know capitalize off of this move. I think that's uh, what surprises me the most: the fact yeah. that he was like, "Well, we knew this was coming," and it's like, "Did we? <laughs> Did yeah. we know this was coming? Because there's been nothing to indicate this is going to happen." Yeah, I, I definitely don't understand the sentiment right mm-hmm. uh, we talked about even like earlier on and we mentioned like uh how a lot of the reason why you have situations like uh wendell and a dominic or like a, a jt and a steven mm-hmm. sitting at the end together is because there's kind of this you know i don't want to you know i don't want to make the uh, producers happy but there is kind of this prisoner's dilemma of voting out your strong number one ally Mm -hmm. uh, where they're simultaneously acting as a threat to you and a shield and also providing you uh, numerical leverage. Mm -hmm. And the reason that you have situations where uh, people are like, oh my god, it's so stupid that Wendell and Dominic never turned each other. Oh, it's so stupid that Steven never voted out JT. It's like, there's never a good time to do it, except maybe at the like very, very end. Like yeah, you have four, to like pull it off five. at the last moment. Yes, or it's disaster. I, that's that's what we both came down on, right? Like we both agree yeah. that the optimal move is just like play for the end with your ride or die, and then maybe at the end try to take them out if you can. Yeah. Like don't burn your game just to burn their game. Yeah, no, definitely. And we kind of saw, like, an Edge of Extinction, for instance, uh, a similar uh, issue where uh, a lot of these, like, kind of big dog players uh, were like, oh, we're going to work together. And they're like, oh, never mind. We're actually going to just take each other out. Uh, and you have the, like, uh, Wentworth and War Dog situation mm-hmm. play out where it's like, yes, you know, War Dog gets his, his you know, brilliant, amazing move. He takes out Kelly Wentworth and, and masterminds that. Oh, never mind. He's, he's out of the game. He's out of the game immediately. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think he's the perfect example of why you don't do this too early. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I will talk about, obviously, the specifics when we get down to it. But, like, this to me, you know, after this happens, kind of feels like War Dog-esque to me. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. That's fair. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we get to uh, the immunity challenge. I think I don't know if there was there was really no other conversations. I know immunity challenge is pretty early. In the yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it was. it was like twenty five minutes in. Um. And uh, it's a st- standard. Uh, it's one of Jeff's favorite challenges. Any challenge where Jeff can uh, talk about, you know. Things getting hard when you're messing mm-hmm. with your balls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's you know, about it. He loves move it. Move your hand up and down the rod. <laughs> yeah. Get into position, everything. Mm-hmm. It's all here. Yeah. It's all Classic. for one of those. Uh, I can't remember if it was Jimmy Kimmel or The Soup, but one of them did like an unnecessary censorship where they liked clips from these challenges of Jeff mm-hmm. where they could very easily bleep out a word to make it sound inappropriate. Yeah. You're playing what the bleep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, Yeah, uh, pretty, it seemed like nobody except for her first part in Xander was doing particularly good uh, in this challenge. Shan was doing okay for a while, but she has, uh, she got to a point uh, that I often get to when I play this challenge, which is where you just lose control and you just start Mm -hmm. flailing randomly and you're able to control it for a while, but after a certain point, you just can't control it. <laughs> right? Yeah, no, it, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's no surprise it came down to those two, because those two seem to have, like, the best, like, core balance yeah. to them. Yeah. So it was exciting to see which one of them was going to win. But uh, not surprised. I mean, 
Uh, Ricard already showed that his core is strong as hell from that like foot challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, so hey, good for him. Second immunity. It's good stuff. It's yep, always I, fun when it like ruins the plans of uh, the majority alliance. Yeah, uh, definitely. I would have been interesting to kind of see if a similar thing would have played out if he hadn't won that challenge, or like how that would have you know worked itself out. Uh, so I definitely think he felt uh, very uh, you know empowered or emboldened by that immunity. Yeah, he had a, to, he had to, a to, hohitis, yeah. but with the immunity to the necklace yeah. for sure. I mean, it's a little bit, a little bit different, right? Because um, you know, I, I think it's I think it's slightly different, however, because you know, I guess the the real only power you can get from a, an immunity necklace, unless you are somebody who is just on the bottom and in danger, is yeah. it gives you the ability to play more aggressively and play like riskier uh, yeah. and try to make like riskier short term plays without the. Yeah. The worry of at least it bouncing back immediately on you. Uh, that's usually that's usually how I would recommend utilizing an immunity win. Mm. No, definitely. So, yeah, um, we have the Ricard wins the immunity, and uh, and Shan's thoughts are: well, Ricard won immunity, so I don't have to protect Ricard now. So that means I don't have to take out Deshaun, which is what I wanted to do in order to counter him trying to take out uh, Ricard. Uh, what was your thoughts on that logic? Because that seems a little weird to me. Um, I mean, I think just like the, the real bad part was just like she was like, oh, I was worried before, but now that Ricard won immunity, obviously Deshaun and Danny aren't going to try anything now. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, she just felt so confident in their alliance which was unfortunate to see because obviously they didn't feel the same way about their alliance yeah um yeah well i mean not immediately but once ricard you know Mm -hmm. once bill uh, once ricard builds beans them for sure um i yeah it's uh it's odd i feel like once you've kind of put pieces in place and you know that certain people are disloyal to you, uh, trying to stay the course is just kind of a fool's errand. Uh, and, like, you kind of have to, like, well, like, once the card's on the table, you kind of have to play with them, uh, mm. like, you know, no matter what. That's my kind of feeling. Yeah, I mean, I have, like, the rule um, that I've, like, talked about in other podcasts, not this podcast, but, like, into the Survivor New York ones we've done, where it's, like, If someone writes your name down ever, and even if you don't get voted off, like, it's over, more or less. Like, you have to, like, go forward with, like, the idea that that alliance is burned and you need to probably get rid of them. Um, Because once people are, like, crossing over the threshold of betraying you, whether it's writing it down, whether they're, like, openly discussing plans to vote your ally out, like it's it's over you have to like readjust your game and i mean there is like the unfortunate part where there are outside the game factors going on here that like shan is is i don't i want to say like distracted by but like it's kind of blinding her to like what needs to be done in this moment yeah it might be part of that but i think it that didn't seem to be the main driving factor it just kind of felt like she i don't know i, I don't I'm just know kind of going off of like her reaction yeah. and liana's reaction when it tied where they both kind of turned to each other and were like you know to Desha- like i think mm-hmm. shan was like really d and like liana mm-hmm. like was like oh you know you're a snake maybe that was in the preview for the yep. next one but uh Shan, Shan called Deshaun a snake, I think, as okay, she was yeah. getting voted out, yeah. Yeah, as, as she was leaving. Yeah. I think, like, from that perspective, she kind of put, like, a lot of stock into their alliance mm-hmm. there that was not, obviously not reciprocated. Sure. I do think, though, you can't, I don't know, you can't, like, make a plan to vote somebody out and then... Like, it becomes 
slightly inconvenient and then be <laughs> like, oh, well, you know, let's forget that plan was made and try to continue as is and just forget about it and go and try to move on to the next round and hopefully uh, maybe maybe the plan will work out better the next round. <laughs> Which is kind of what she had felt like Shan was doing. Because it was like, it wasn't like, uh, oh, I changed my mind, I want to work with this forward down to the end. It felt like, oh, Ricard won immunity, so I can kind of kick this uncomfortable pan, pan down the road yeah. one round. Mm. Uh, and that's just like, it, you kind of like open Pandora's box at that point. Like if you're if you're not planning on saying trip to the alliance, if you've already had these discussions, if the trust is already fractured, you kind of just have to like rip the bandaid off at that point. Mm. Um, you know. Yeah. No. Agreed. Yeah. Um, so. She, uh, they make the plan, and it's just going to be five votes on Erica. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, but obviously, uh, this is kind of awkward for Ricard, because he's standing in the circle, and he's like, I know that these two just like tried to you know, orchestrate it against me, and if I didn't win this, then it would be me going right now. So this is not... I don't really want to do this. Yeah. It's like, yeah, uh, this doesn't work for me at all, actually, Shan. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, what, what do you think Ricard should have done here? Do you think he made the right play or do you think he, like, do you think he had a better path forward? I mean, he shouldn't have voted Shan out. Shan wasn't coming for him and was explicitly warning him of two other players wanting to vote him out. Three other players, really, um, but two for this. I think he should have tried to either work Shan in a way to, like, be like, look, like, Danny, Deshaun are coming for me. I can't just sit idly by. I need to try to make a move on them. I want you with me to make this move. Or tried to go to Erica, Heather, and Xander and pitch a similar thing. Would it have worked? I don't think so. I think... Heather and Erica are perhaps more loyal to Danny and Deshaun than they would be to Ricard. But maybe if Shan and Liana come over, they work with Xander, there's an extra vote in the mix. I think that's probably the better way to go, personally, but what do you think? Yeah, I I think he should have at least tried to approach Shan and be like, we're not doing this, right? We gotta yeah. take out Deshaun still, because I can't work with them if I know that they're trying to vote me out. Like, and mm. the, I would have been voted out if I didn't win. Like, mm. I can't, you know, this, this is ridiculous. Like, you can't like, expect me to um, do this. Yeah. Because where is this, like, it's exciting that he voted Shan out. Yeah. And it's a good episode. There's no doubt. Maybe the best episode of the season. But yeah. where does this leave for card? <laughs> yeah. I would argue no. Yeah. Uh, we'll see, though. Maybe you can surprise us. Um, but yeah, um, it's not great. Um, and I think that he didn't really seem to have a plan of what to do other than, like, kind of a combination of panic and feeling like he needs to take some sort of reins, regardless of whether or not he's, like, turning the reins off the side of a cliff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's disappointing um, but we'll see maybe we'll eat our words maybe he'll just immunity out and uh, none of this will matter yeah I mean you know the, they're still like Xander's still in the game like yeah Xander has an extra vote and an idol but he's still a threat uh, like perhaps a bigger threat than Ricardo at this point uh, we'll see um, you know so he basically only has to survive three more uh, tribal councils and then there's fire Mm. Um, so yeah, it's not inconceivable that he could still get to the end and win. Uh, but I, as we mentioned, I, I just don't like this as a move, pretty much ever. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I did appreciate at Tribal Council that they didn't like try to hype up the revote at all. They just, like, very, like, clearly it's Shan getting voted off. Yeah. You know, and it's sad. So they had, like, a sad uh, slant to it, so. Yeah, it was, like, some, like, slow motion, some music. 
uh yeah it was cool um yeah it's interesting uh and then there was this is the moment the moment that i went from like 90 percent shan is getting voted out to like 100 percent shan is getting voted out was danny's answer where he was like some people think they know where the alliances sit and those people are wrong <laughs> yeah that was a yeah. weird thing to say that was, that was very stick to the plan ask <laughs> i was surprised <laughs> that didn't uh, raise them any more eyebrows. Keith so. now sitting at home yeah. watching this like, this guy is spitting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. Anything else you want to talk about, I guess? Because, like, I don't know. I think that Ricard going... Well, it's odd, because, like, Ricard, the Ricard's logic throughout this whole situation... Which is very odd to me, because he's like, I can't stick with this alliance that I know I'm at the bottom of because I know that Deshaun and Danny are not with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Heather, Erica, and Xander, and I'm like, yes, okay, this sounds good, uh, and I'm going to get them to vote out Shan. And I was like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, he knows about Xander's extra vote, right? And he's like, well, actually, that's not enough votes. And I was like, Hmm. Well, he doesn't even know about Xander's extra votes. What's the plan here? He's like, I'm going to go and rat out the fact that Shan told me about Deshaun and Danny plotting gets me to Deshaun and Danny. I was like, hmm, this seems a little uh, <laughs> counterproductive. <laughs> the initial, initial uh, inciting incident as to what is going on here. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking was... Uh... The only like thing outside of the vote that I was thinking was, does, say you have a hidden immunity idol and you know yeah. you're the person getting voted off, mm -hmm. like you know it. It's better to play your shot in the dark that tribal, right? Because you give yourself a chance to keep your idol. If, because then if you don't get the shot in the dark, you just play your idol anyways. I think so, but then. You Presuming that all of the votes are on you, you wouldn't be able to cast a solo vote. Yeah, I'm just saying... That like, would be the, if it's a slit, yeah. Yeah, it was like, I think the play is to play your shot in the dark first instead of it being your last option. Because sure. most likely it's not going to hit either way. Um <laughs> But you could keep your idol, and then you, then you're in the game another round with your right. idol. That could be yeah, 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 yeah. Probably but won't I... come up at all, and probably doesn't even matter to bring up now. But I was just thinking about that. Sure, I mean, maybe it all matter. Maybe Xander will think of it, um, and it might matter, and it might save him an extra round, and that'd be the thing that pushes him over the edge. You never know. Because mm -hmm. um, we're but... getting down to it. Um, yeah, yeah. Final seven, final six, right? Is the last time you can use an idol. He may as well play his shot in the dark at Final 7, presuming they're coming for him. Which, you have to imagine, two episodes in a row they voted someone with an idol out. It's getting down to it for Xander. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely uh, he's definitely playing with house money at this point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's an interesting thing. I didn't really think about that. That, like, because of the order that Jeff... I think, yeah, I think when said he played her is... Jeff revealed the shot in the dark thing and then asked for the idols and advantages. Yeah, because uh, the shot in the dark's like, everyone needs to know it was played so they know how many votes are coming out of the jar. Um, where So then, I think... Also yeah. can, it also can inform you about whether or not you should play your idol, right? If Very somebody true. if somebody plays their shot in the dark and it's successful, that could be like, oh, maybe I should just play yeah, my maybe idol. I should, should play safe. mine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so yeah, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's definitely, uh, if the shot in the dark returns in future seasons, it's something to keep, uh, keep in the back of our minds. Mm -hmm. um, Any future players listening, if you get out there in the shot in the dark and, and you're just screwed, well, <laughs> could be the move. Well, I mean, you know, in this case, if Shan is able to sniff out exactly what's happening, that it's mm -hmm. a three, three, two split, uh, what could be a completely uh insane thing for her to do and like we know nobody's expecting her to have done that but Fucking if she dr were, manhattan over yeah, here just yeah, if, if, knowing if everything 
if she's uh, if she's like you know omniscient, right? Mm. The correct play is to just vote for Liana, right? So because mm. uh, Liana screwed. Like the there's no other like if Shan plays her idol, Liana just goes home anyways. So it's better to just yeah, vote I for mean, Liana and, and cut your losses. It's always such an underrated thing that people yeah. don't feel do enough. Like uh, Alex if, you're, if you're yeah, if you're in a two person alliance and you're getting the vote split. Tell your ally that, all right, we'll just vote together, and then just vote them out. Like, they're, they're not going to blame you. Yeah, it's yeah. not about you. <laughs> yeah. You can't, you can't. Everybody's supposed to do it at that point. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, go. we saw it on Survivor Fiji and then pretty much never again. Yep. So. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, look, Survivor Fiji, uh, underrated. A lot of... A lot yeah, of like a really modern, nice a lot of modern strategy was invented in uh, Survivor FG or like executed for the first time. Uh, you have like the yeah, Edgardo move in terms of mm -hmm. like prioritizing uh, to like you know, make sure that people are kind of uh, you know tricked about an idol, like kind of debated a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have uh, the vote split being executed kind of for the first time, mm -hmm. even though it was like talked about in uh, Cook Islands. So. Yeah. yeah, and it's especially impressive considering that was the first season the idol worked that specific way, and like players like Earl were able to kind of figure out how to maneuver mm -hmm. around it so yeah. easily. So yeah, shout out Earl, underrated mm -hmm. king of Survivor Fiji. Yeah, no, for sure. So, uh, yeah, we gave Lex a shout out last episode. We got to give Earl a shout out this one so we can keep our old school Survivor cred going. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened with Fiji. Fiji just got the reputation of being a bad season. I thought um, Fiji used to be your least favorite season because of the high was. Yeah. It was. And then I rewatched it when I was like a little older yeah. and more mature. And I guess more just like chill with people being completely screwed over. But I guess the inherent fairness of the game mattered less to me mm -hmm. than the interesting strategy of it. Um, because like I watched it when it first came out in like when I was in seventh or eighth grade, whenever it was. And I was like, this whole season is tarnished because it didn't start off on a fair footing. And then I watched it again in college and I was like, Oh, this actually slaps really hard. This is a really yeah. good season. It's very, very underrated. Uh, like, yeah, I mean, you know, definitely have had that with very, <laughs> very bad. Yeah. Yes. Very stupid twist, uh, mm -hmm. but great cast and great strategy. Yeah, and hey, in fairness, the only person who got medevac was on the Have Tribe, so <laughs> I don't know what that says. Yeah, I mean, look, I, you know, I don't want to like come off as an asshole, but like the, you know, I obviously care about the player safety, but to me, uh, in terms of like player safety or fairness, it's just a matter of like creating a compelling TV product uh, mm -hmm. because you know the it's not. Like being unfair to the players isn't what was bad about the half have not twist. It was that it made pretty much every challenge pointless. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, the have really just stopped every challenge. Mm -hmm. It was like kind of um, like a, a, a worse version of the medallion of power. Uh, mm -hmm. It was like the medallion of food and shelter. And they're like one, like they very easily could have made the twist work if they were just like, if you win immunity. You get the shitty camp, but you want immunity. But you have to go live on the shitty camp for the next right. three days. Yeah, like, like the yeah. like the medallion power worked. Yeah, where which is like you use a medallion power, you have to give it to the other tribe, and yep. so you have to either wait and think that you can win it without it, or you can use it and basically guarantee yourself a challenge. Yeah, but the way they tried to remedy it was like four vote, four like eliminations in. They were like, "Hey, do you want to give up immunity or keep your camp?" And they were like, "Oh, we can just vote one of these people off. We don't give a shit." <laughs> like, <laughs> it was yeah. like, "Okay, shit." Thought that would be a harder decision. Mm -hmm. It was like, "No, we have a really commanding lead at this point, so it yeah. do <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> we can we can take a hit on one of these losers, and we'll just keep on yeah. steamrolling. We'd rather exactly. lose one person now than like three people in a row after we mm -hmm. get the shitty camp." Yeah, it didn't make any sense to why they would do that. Um, yeah. Anyways, we got on a major tangent there. Um, we have to. Yeah. We almost had an hour. <laughs> True. Uh, so I guess we can do a little projection going forward. Uh, you know, the start of the season, and for like. 
five-ish weeks. We were very high on Shan being the primary winner candidate for the season. Now Shan is gone. Uh, mm -hmm. So you want to you wanna lock in who you think uh, the winner is now, the final seven? I, I got to go with my, my winner pick, Deshaun. Yeah. Like, I figured. Yeah. Um, he's the yeah. he's the guy. He's the only other guy who's gotten like a huge amount of screen time at this point. Yeah, and is saying like logical things and making moves like, like I would say Deshaun or Danny, but Danny really has not been present. Um, oh, for sure, yeah. To the point where he got two, he got a confessional after the challenge, and then a confessional right back after the commercial. And I was like, is Danny getting voted off tonight? <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree. I think that uh, it's most likely Deshaun uh, from that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll happily take partial credit because, you know, uh, uh, Brian was able to pick a winner pick first, but he was able to get Deshaun off the board first. I came into that preview episode with a plan of picking Deshaun as my winner pick, and I, I went and I picked Liana as my backup, uh, which I think so, is fine. Shout out Natalie yeah. Anderson for the hookup. Uh, for coming, fighting her way back from the edge of extinction yep. and helping me out there. So, um, even though Ben's winner pick got further, yeah. like, than mine, um, like, if it was a traditional game. Yeah. For, for the you know, people who didn't tune into that preview podcast, uh, Denise was my winner pick. So, mm -hmm. you know, we both did pretty well in terms of final placement. Um, so yeah, I uh, I think it's probably Deshaun uh, again as well for similar reasons that uh, it's obviously not Heather, it's probably not Erica as much as like Reddit is memeing about Erica being the like clear winner at this point, um, and uh, I don't think it's Danny for the reasons you mentioned as well, where like the it, the storyline has always been from basically episode one Deshaun and Danny as a pair. And Deshaun has always been the one of that pair who's gotten the most focus in screen time. Um, so for that, uh, I don't think Liana can win a jury vote, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, we talked about it through text before um, coming on. Getting the like biggest lose in the final Tribal Council like edit ever. Yeah. Like, it's just so brutal. Maybe, maybe since... Um, um, oh my god. Laurel, right? That was her name? Yeah. Dude, I was thinking Yanny because of that fucking meme that happened, like, at the same time. And I was like, that is not her name. Uh, Laurel. Laurel got a lot of, like, similar, like, I really need to make a move, but, like, I I can't right now. Like, confessionals, and that's the feeling I'm getting from Liana right now. But, hey, if we get one and two, or, like, one and three, it's still pretty fucking good i'll take that especially yeah. as i mentioned because i wanted to shun <laughs> right. um exactly so yeah 100 percent uh and again i don't i think that xander and ricard are both like dark horses from an editing standpoint but mm -hmm. i just don't see a path forward especially for ricard at this point despite the fact that he made this move mm -hmm. uh because like he just doesn't have the relationships right like there's nobody yeah. he has a who who is voting with ricard now no, I, I agree, and that's, like, what I was saying, like, I was surprised that he saw this as an inevitability because he did not prepare for it. Yeah. It's like a final. Like, I know the final's coming. It's like, are you going to study for the final? No, but I'm aware it's going to happen, so, like, mm -hmm. same thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I showed up, right? Like, I, yeah. I, I came. You know, I knew it was happening. I came. I'm here, right? Mm -hmm. You know? The final's over. Oh, oh wait, hold on. Getting the grade back. <laughs> not looking too hot. Oh, should have uh, yeah. studied, I guess. Damn. Yeah, should have uh, made some other relationships that I can carry forward with uh, and not tried to orchestrate a blindside of my one ally with the people who have just tried to orchestrate a blindside of me like 12 hours ago. Yeah, and that's like what we talk about a lot where like, we're like, it's interesting to see like the good players set the board for themselves. Mm -hmm. He did not set the board, no, at all. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, like I think that he just kind of feels like, like him. I think he just thinks that his win condition is just getting to a point where he can pull this blindside off, right? 
And he's like, okay, now I've, I've like, I'm put myself in a winning position. But it's like, okay, there's still four rounds left in the game. What are you doing to get through those four rounds? Yeah. Right? You put yourself into a winning position if you can win the next four challenges, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, that's not happening, probably. <laughs> Maybe it is. He's, he's pretty good at challenges, but that's not a that's, a, that's a bad, uh, it's a bad position. So, yeah. I think that my, my pick right now, Deshaun, and I think Xander is a dark horse. He got a pretty quiet edit this episode. He was relatively uninvolved in what was going on. But he's at the final seven. He's one of the better challenge competitors. He has an idol and an extra vote. And for some reason, nobody is looking at him. People, people just ignore that he's still there and can still presumably relatively easily win the game if you just keep ignoring him. So I don't know. Yeah, and I mean, so the the record for immunity is still five, right? Five in a row, yeah. yeah. Five in a row. Um, I think five, or, I think that's right. Or yeah. just five in general. Is it, is it five in general? Yeah, yeah I think so. Well, Held by a, a bunch of players over the various seasons, like Kobe, mm-hmm. Ozzy, Mike, Brad Culpepper. Like, a bunch of players have done that. But uh, when you're a card, you're putting yourself in the position to where you have to get the record number of immunity wins to potentially win the season mm-hmm. not good not but good can, at all you can also tie and then win fire presumably well he has two yes so two. seven six and five would be the other three yeah and so then he'd have to tie. win fire too yeah you have to tie the record or beat the record uh you have to tie the record and win fire or beat the record uh, to, to make it to the end, presuming that he's just kind of DOA at this point, which I think yeah. he, he might be. Uh, so, yeah. I, don't know. I think right now it's looking like it's just a four of Deshaun, Danny, Heather, and Erica. Like, mm. yeah, that's kind of... Three. Yeah, I think that's it, but we'll see. Because uh, I, don't, I don't know if, like... I mean, what else... Do Heather and Erica do? Like, do they go with Liana and Xander? And be like, okay, like, the only way that one of the two of us can win is in a final three against Liana. And we just have to hope that somebody can beat Xander in fire, right? Is that that the out for them? Or do they just stick with this Luvu 4? I think, like, if they were playing to win, they would, I guess, do the Liana Xander route. But uh, I don't know. It's hard because, like, they probably feel a lot safer with Deshaun and Danny because they, they've been with them the yeah. entire game. Yeah. Yeah. And it is also funny at this point, uh, with that in mind, that there's been so many talk, so much talk of the season about, like, uh, you know, women's alliances or women's having numbers. And at this point, the final seven, there are four men and three women. Uh, so that didn't work out very well. No, Danny won. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's uh he's he has his, his Heisenberg moment right right now. Like, yeah. I won. <laughs> yeah. So good for him. <laughs> yeah, he's the one he's the one who knocks, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean he called it out from the merge. He was like, Listen, we need to get men strong to the end. Mm. And look at look at us now. Who would have thought? Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, at this point, he just has to make the move that we've talked about that Ricard should have made, which is to get to the final four with, you know, Deshaun and Heather and Erica, and, uh, then make sure that Deshaun throws that four by any means necessary. Yep. You know, I mean, the blueprint... to eat him in fire or what? The blueprint's there. I mean, yeah. um, from like, you know... The Edge of Extinction season, Chris doing it, winning, and then Natalie not doing it and losing. Like, Natalie knocks Tony out in fire, probably wins the all winner season, you know? Yeah, I think so. there's a conversation. Yeah, I, I know that there's, you know, other issues with her jury management from the Edge of Extinction that uh, right. has come up, but uh, definitely would have uh, definitely would have looked good. <laughs> would have, yeah. Would have, I guess would have... Rob... Rob in his vote says that, like, you know, you almost did it. You almost did the perfect thing, but you didn't get rid of this guy. And then, like, revealed the Tony because he's very dramatic, as we know. Yeah. But uh, I mean, again, to be fair, though, it's, it's very. There is this, like, thing that happens with, like, people like Stephen Fishback where it's like, 
man, what a stupid thing to not get rid of JT. It's like, man, what a stupid thing to not get rid of Tony. And it's like, mm, hard when three people are trying their best to make sure Tony wins the game. Right. This is, you know, as we saw also in BB23 with uh, with Xavier, that, like, mm-hmm. if you've just convinced three other people that you should win the game and that they should just, like, give up to you, uh, the other people, like, there's not really much you can do. Right. Oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, until next week, I guess. There's nothing yeah. else. Uh, until uh, uh, we get a, myst- a mysterious twist that's going to happen at a challenge. Uh, it's going to be very risky, Brian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah I, I said it in our chat before this, too. Like, mm-hmm. Just when the the train was well on the tracks, Jeff Probst is doing the, like, yeah, it's the trolley problem, but it's like, do you not do anything and let the season play out well, or do you divert it and ruin the season? Well, who knows? Who's to say what the right move is? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Uh, yeah, and full cards to the table. Uh, this uh, this twist has been spoiled, uh, and Brian and I know what the twist is. We won't spoil it on this podcast, no. uh, but we will say it's very bad. <laughs> it's legendarily awful. Yeah, it's so we like, can look wow. forward to that. Well, we at least are preparing our bodies and our minds to come on here and rant about how stupid this twist is next week. Yeah. Hey, you got positive, Brian and Ben, this episode? Done. Yep. Dead. <laughs> no, We're look, going back. It's it's very straightforward. You give us a good episode, we'll talk positively and praise it, mm-hmm. as we've done. You give us a bad episode with stupid shit that like mm-hmm. ruins the game and like kills all the momentum, and we'll crap all over the show. Yep. It's fair. I think that's fair. We're not we're not unfair people. You no. give us a good product and we'll we'll talk about it that it's a good product. Oh man. Uh yeah i'm just gonna i'm gonna marinate in this episode i'm gonna enjoy it for now before i go back to the reality that is modern survivor yeah and shan i think you know if there's a second chance of season coming up as is is heavily rumored to be 40 season 43 second chances too but we've had rumors of second chances too for a while uh very interesting i hadn't heard that rumor so very interesting um i think you gotta get dylan to watch a lot of seasons yeah. between yeah now and then. Do, we do a lot of binging um, yeah. he's about to get like, spoiled if not yeah. uh hopefully I, I think that shan is a lock i think that shan is like a probably like one of the you know main characters of the season if not the main character of the season mm-hmm. um, if we're getting a returning season player anytime soon uh yeah she's on it yeah who are some locks ben Give me, give me some names for the second um, chance. Angelina. Okay. I, yeah. I, I would fucking love if Angelina played Survivor again. Uh, yeah. I was thinking Rick Devins. He's a mortal lock. Like, yeah. send him to Fiji already. Um, who else? Who else have they loved? Dom, probably. Yeah, Dom, yeah. Mm, definitely mm. him. Hopefully Chrissy. Can we get, can we get a Chrissy yeah. chance? Like, I, I think I she deserves it. I know, uh, yeah. Um, I don't like. I would like to see Devin Pinto again, but I think that he said that he only would do a blood versus water with his mom. But I, I hopefully he changes his mind. I think that you know, I, I think that he has a lot of interesting uh, stuff to offer. Uh, I think Mama C uh, is somebody who got screwed out of the yeah. first. Uh, would be interesting to see. Just a tough, tough position for Mama C to be in in that like vote where she was like everyone thought that she was gonna win the season and i think people didn't vote for her because of that not me of course i voted for her but um yeah that was that was a little rough and then maybe we can get t-bird out there this time like we'll see it'd be be nice she is very openly like i would really like the chance to play survivor again so i think it'd be sad to not you know yeah yeah they gave, they gave fucking Troyzan and Brad Culpepper a cha- spot on Game Changers and they left T-Bird off. Yeah. What the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, to be fair, I love Brad Culpepper on Game Changers, to be mm. fair. But, no, oh. he's great on... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. Uh, but yeah, I think there's I think there's a lot of... If it is a second chance season, it depending on how far back they want to reach. On the initial second chance season, they reached all the way back to season one, so... 
Um, you know, if that's on the books, then uh, there's obviously so many names that we could pull out, but those are at least from like since the last second chance of the season, those are some names I could think of. Yeah. Who hasn't played from Survivor Australia again? We gotta we gotta <laughs> we gotta get all of those Any, players back. <laughs> anyone worth Roger is how old is Roger now? Elizabeth, um, uh, she's oh no. crazy uh, now. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess like you know, I don't know. There's, I, I can't really. I don't think there's really anybody from that season. You know, that get Cal back with like a novelty beef jerky like T-shirt. Yeah, that'd on. be in, yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um. Yeah, I don't know if we need Oscar. I would. I would rather if we're pulling from old seasons, we can pull from. Let's pull from Borneo again. Let's get some. You know, Greg Buis, Greg, Greg Bui, however. You That'd be it. insane. Yeah. Um. I'm pretty sure he's living off the grid. Uh. No one's heard from him. Uh. He's like the one survivor, like from season one, who did not embrace the fame mm-hmm. of the situation at all. Yeah. Uh, and just like fell off the grid, which lots of lot of respect for that personally. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think names that were brought up uh, around the time of like 31 to 34 were like like Jeff Kent's. It was like one name that I remember seeing a lot of. I don't know. We'll see. It'd I don't know. It'd be yeah. tough for Jeff Kent to. Because to, everyone will know who he is this time. Yeah, I don't particularly know if I would care to see Jeff Kent 2.0. Mm. Uh, I think there's probably better people to pull, but. Yeah, I mean, as far as locks, I think we mentioned, yeah, I think it's Shan at this point now, I would say. Angelina, Rick Devins are my top three, I agree. Let's get Sean back from my uh, Marquesas. That would be a good one. one. I, I've uh, heard he's open to it. Yeah, let's so, do it. Uh, that'd be a good one. And Boston Rob has, like, said, like, you should put Sean back on the show. He'd do well. So I, I'm hoping, like, if Boston Rob came out and was like, everyone vote for Sean, he'd get on. Otherwise, yep. it's just the super fan vote, which could could work. Mm-hmm. We couldn't get T Bird on the first time. That's the part that bothers me. Or Shane Powers, yeah. Yeah, or Shane. Yeah, that was insane. And... Um, yeah, I don't know. I think there's a uh, there's a lot uh, a lot of good people. You know, I'm not. I don't know if I'm necessarily clamoring for another All Star season uh, coming mm-hmm. straight off all players or when at war so quickly. But uh, you know, it's fine. I, I'm. If you're if you're saying you're gonna put Angelina back on my screen, I'm not gonna complain. Yeah, if there's one thing I know about survivors, they'll do an all star season for no reason. Yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of shows, I shouldn't say a lot of shows, but a, a lot of times, all star seasons seem like these sacred things. You know, Big Brother only did a second all star season out of kind of necessity because they weren't able to cast normally. Um, survivors like. We'll bring a bunch of randos back. We do not care. I mean, to be fair, Survivor has, through 40 seasons, only done five full All-Star seasons. True. Um, True. But they've done a lot of, a lot of like, parties. Yeah, returning and yeah. three half-star seasons. and Yeah. yeah. So. So. Oh, well, we'll see. It's all speculation at this point. So uh, that'll be fun to do, like, a year from now. Or, like, I guess a year from now that this season will be airing. But, you know, like, yeah. eight months from now. Like the cast has already spoiled. <laughs> we'll do our preview. Well, actually, we'll get to do a preview like completely blind, you know, mm-hmm. like right when they leave from the finale. That'll be fun. If they do, they do a vote again. Yeah. Again, yeah. Oh, you think it'll be a like they'll just cast it? It might. Like, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's up in the air. I don't know. I will say, absolutely shocking. They never went back to the fan vote after the first one. I felt like that was a big success. I thought the fan vote aspect was a success. I thought mm. the uh, bringing people who knew they weren't on the season out to go sit in the audience and then be told on live television that the America didn't want you, uh, a little bit brutal. Yeah, I mean, they were like, remember when we did that? It's like Big Brother All-Stars and it was kind of fucked up. Let's do that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully they don't do that. Hopefully they just, like, give, like, a, and here are your returning players. And, like, they mm-hmm. come out one by one, you know? Like, mm-hmm. you know, similar to, like, the beginning of All-Stars where Jeff was like, this person from this season, you know? 
Yeah, I think the, the the worry about that is it gets leaked, but I would I think I don't really care if it gets leaked. Before no, I don't care finale. either. Uh, yeah, I don't. So, give a shit. Like, yeah, it's like yeah, you know, there's no there's no no reason. Like anybody who who is going to see the leak probably doesn't care about it. Uh, and if it can save you know uh, people like Shane Powers getting his heart broken on national television. Uh, when he was told over and over again by people in the greater community that he was a lock, uh, that would be uh, ideal. Yeah, no, for sure. Okay, so we've milked it. Like yeah, we days. went, we we talked, uh, we talked for like thirty minutes about the episode and forty five minutes about random bullshit. So classic that's, podcast. That's, that's what you get with the blindsiders. Yep. So uh, yeah, you want to? We, we your, will uh, go on tangents. Yeah. that is our promise to you. Well, yeah, because the issue, the issue is, like, either we have, like, this episode, which was very good, but there wasn't a lot of, like, kind of meat to it, or we have, like, the very complicated episodes that are bad, and all we're doing is just ranting about the annoyances of it. Uh, so there's really no happy medium. No, not at all. Oh, man. So with that, follow me on Twitter, at the fake TheFakeBMarns, B-M-A-R-R. I'm um, also on Wicked Good Sports, which is a spinoff of our main channel where I talk about sports. So you can find me there almost every single day of the week talking about sports. Yeah. More than halfway through the football season, so. I know. It's sad. Yeah. At least the Dolphins aren't mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. That's something. True. <laughs> Hanging on by the. Yeah. <laughs> by the like... Patriots have turned around, too. I'm, uh, you know... They look really good. Cautiously uh, optimistic about their uh, chances in this, these playoffs. Presuming they're, they're well, I think they're the uh, number one wild card seed right now. If not, no, the, no, they're the number one in their division right now. Are, are they? They passed the Bills. Yeah, they passed the Bills. The Bills yeah. lost two straight. Okay. The Bills right, are that, trash. That, that, that must have happened. This. I, I'm not like tapped into the uh standings after this past week so they happened this past yeah, week right? yeah it did yep yeah, so Patriots go. seven and four bills six and five there you go so they had they had a hell of a run one year yeah and the patriots have won <laughs> what patriots five have... in a row now so yep yeah there five uh, yeah mac looking jones good. looking legit oh yeah uh, as as i said on uh, the wicked good sports channel when he got drafted that he, this was going to be a really good fit for him and it is a yeah, perfect he's, fit he's definitely the, the kind of quarterback that the, the patriots uh system you know needs yeah. uh, it, it's it sucks as a dolphins fan but you know happy for him yeah, <laughs> happy I mean, for all my friends and family who root for the patriots and to be fair like you know I think if it wasn't the patriots the bills would be in so i know i know oh man but yeah for um, the sports channel for more sports talk yeah, uh, and you follow me on Twitter up and Sharon. Follow the main channel on Twitter at WG Everything, and then Wicked Good Everything on Facebook, TikTok, Twitch, Instagram, and then obviously on YouTube, our main channel, Wicked Good Everything. This is our podcast channel at Better Radio, and uh, also you can follow us at The Blindsiders on all major podcasting platforms. Be sure to hit the follow button, the subscribe button on YouTube on Better Radio, so we can. Mm our numbers you know we're trying to just get five more five more subscribers all we Some care we don't, we're not trying to make money or anything like that we're not big shots all we care about is just getting to a point where the back end stuff for us is easier <laughs> because these platforms care about just getting to a point where they're like oh you're a real podcast and a real channel that actually matters so we'll give you better tools exactly uh, so you know, just help us get to that point, and we'll stop bothering you as much. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll be back next week to talk about uh, episode uh, 11. And, uh, yeah, we're getting down to it. The finale is in, what, uh, three weeks? Yeah, three weeks. Oh. So that's exciting, and I promise. Uh, the main channel hasn't had a lot of videos. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on record, so I hold myself accountable. Four videos in December coming out. Oh. I, got, I got big plans, so mm -hmm. should be okay. good. Yeah, we we'll uh, talked about some plans here. Uh, well, hopefully, hopefully, it, uh, hopefully it's good. Uh, and other than that, happy Thanksgiving, and uh, see you next time. Bye, everyone.